now on News Talk 105.9 WMAL. O'Connor and Company. It is 6.06. It's O'Connor and Company on this Tuesday morning. It's a cleverly disguised Tuesday, though. It, it feels like a Monday. It looks like a Monday. It smells like a Monday coming off that Labor Day weekend. But it is. It's Tuesday, I assure you. And coming up at 7.35, Steve Moore from Heritage will talk about the state of the economy and how that may play into the political equation. 8.05, Story Zimmerman running for Fairfax County School Board. And then at 8.35, Brent Bozell on media. It's Larry O'Connor alongside Julie Gunlock. Good morning. Good morning, Julie. All right, we've been talking about um, teachers' unions and uh, school administrators, school counselors, and sort of how they've been radically taken over by the a radical progressive left who's basically trying to get between parents and their children. Separate them, yes. A whole host yes. of issues, yes. and including the most sensitive of all issues, right. the sexual nature. Right. We've also talked about, of course, the revelations that there is porn, graphic pornography. Yes. That's targeted toward children. Middle schoolers. In our yeah. school libraries. Yep. And, of course, conservatives are accused of wanting to ban books by saying maybe these books are not age-appropriate for our children. Yeah, we're book burners. We're book burners, and we're trying to ban books. But, of course, I pointed this out the other day that the the biggest book banners in America, the, the people who literally spend every single day of their lives banning books from libraries— are librarians. Yes, because it's impossible to put every single book in a library. Exactly. Every day, librarians go, hmm, we'll take that one. We won't take that one. That's we'll take right. that one. We'll t- we won't take that. They are, by definition, book banners. And it's called, dis- but it, re- I mean, jokes aside, it is discernment. That's it right. is them saying, you know what, this is a great, our community might enjoy this history of, you know, I don't know, the Potomac River, yeah. but they are not going to really care for, you know, whatever. The point is, they're choosing which books it's, to stock. It's their judgment, these yes. librarians. And so I think it's worth calling into question who these people are. Well, it is, yes. Well, here's their leader. She's the president of the American Library Association. Can I say she? I don't know if she is a she. Good point. There's, there's a pronoun situation there. But I'm going to say she because that's just how I roll. Emily Drabinsky is her name. And investigative journalist Carolyn Borisenko, she attended – the Socialism 2023 Conference. And, Good God. Yeah, I know. And surreptitiously recorded Emily Drabinsky speaking to the gathered masses at the Socialism 2023 Conference. Now, it is a undercover audio, so it's a, some a little bit muffled. So I'm going to let this, it's about a minute long, and I'm going to sort of translate a little bit as it goes. But I think you can make out most of it. Here's, here, here we go. This cover will be followed by the cover in the green. Um, By the way, this is uh, the the MC is introducing speakers, and she's referring to them all as comrades. This comrade will be uh, followed by the comrade in the so green. Tiresome. Followed by this comrade here. Oh, right, a comrade here. That comrade, yeah. Hi, I'm Emily, uh, and I'm a librarian. I just wanted to thank you. I'm I'm Emily, and I'm a librarian. And she goes on to say, I want to thank you for bringing up librarians. But you hear the crowd applauding. Oh, yes. librarians. Yes. This is important to us, librarians. I just want to say thank you for bringing up libraries and classroom libraries, but also school libraries of all kinds, public libraries and higher education libraries who have been attacked in similar ways. All right. Now you hear that she, this is the president of the Librarian Association. And she's specifically singling out school libraries. Higher education libraries, Interesting, isn't elementary it? school lab, but these are not not your county library, not the New York City Public Library. Not no, she's specifically talking about libraries in educational institutions and how they're under attack. Oh, they're under attack. Uh, but I think your point that public education needs to be a side of social organizing. I think libraries really do too, and that happens. I haven't seen that. Public education needs to be a site of socialist organizing, and libraries need to be too, is what she just said. Now, this is the president of the American Library Association saying that public schools and public school libraries need to be sites of socialist organizing. Yeah. Fire them all. Fire them all. (laughs) Fire them all. This is not your mother's librarian. This is not Marion the librarian, okay, from the music man. These people, just like public school teachers, and not just public school teachers, teachers in general, have begun to identify first as activists, then as educators. I hate that kind of, oh, we're an educator. But they are activists first, and the same thing. But look, 
You know, I remember right after 9-11, the Patriot Act, there was this sort of move to be able to look at who's checked out what books in libraries. Mm. Remember? Mm -hmm. And the librarians got all up in arms. They haven't been the same since. Since 9-11. It was like it started this sort of activist wing of, of librarians everywhere. And they now see themselves as arbiters of what's best, and especially now, What's best for kids? And for all of you right now who are saying, I know the librarian in my child's elementary school. Great, good. And she's not like that. And I'm, All right, let me just stop Fine. for a moment. Number one, are you sure about that? You know, to find out, do you really know her? Do you really know? And, and number two, if she is, if, she, if, if that school librarian is fantastic and wonderful and you think she's the best, then you should go and talk to her and say, I love you. I think you're terrific. What are you doing about the president of the American Library Association? Yeah. Because she speaks for you. She represents you. And she just attended this communist gathering, Comrade Emily did, and said that this library should be a breeding ground for socialist organizing. You know, I also, you know, our, our producer, Heather, made a really good point when, when we were talking about this you know this is yet another way in which parents can't just let their kids go in the library right, right. and that used to be and he- okay. heather and i have both noticed this that you go to my library in alexandria virginia big surprise there's a display there's always a display in the children's section and it is just chock full of woke books woke baby you know intersectional right. this gender that and so again this is so frustrating because it makes parenting harder you can't just let them go in the kids section and you're going over there looking right. for your romance novel no you got to hover over them and make sure they're not picking up some crazy book that puts in strange ideas yeah. into their brains so this is another way way in which these activists are making parenting harder or more difficult and they're trying to again groom kids and you can approach the librarian and say listen i know that there's a children's book out there about clarence thomas and and his struggles and upbringing very good and yeah. i know that there's a very pro-american children's book out there about george washington and a pro-american book. where are those books yeah. why aren't they here yeah. and when she and when the librarian gives you in hems and haws and tells you whether to say stop banning those books yeah why are you banning those books from this library you want to annoy a librarian in some of these blue cities, go ask for the Tuttleton twins That's right. to be stopped. Or Bethany Mandel's books. No, they've been banned. Or Rush's they've books. They've been banned. They might as well put them in a parking lot in a giant pile and set them on fire because right. they're literally Hitler. All right. Do you want to hear more from Comrade Emily? Yes. For the first time, working in libraries, I think there's a real opportunity here to both connect with how public education is happening in libraries, but also we need some help in the, the libraries. We need to be We need some help in the public libraries. We need to be on the agenda of socialist organizing. That's it. There you go. Every single librarian right now in America should be asked, do you support Emily Drabinsky, Comrade Emily, the president of the American Library Association? Do you support what she said here or do you condemn it? Because if you support it, you're telling me that our library and our school here in Loudoun County, here in Frederick County, in Prince William County, our library should be a a socialist organizing breeding ground. If if you don't condemn Emily Drabinsky, then that means you're on board with it. That's how it works because that's, that's what they do to us. Yes, and but Larry, it is true that every institution, most of our professional institutions, and and sort of these trade associations, they've all been taken over by the left. The left was very smart in realizing. This is how we affect change. This is how we change the culture for the worst, is take over these organizations. So listen, your library is no longer a safe space for your kids. That's right. A little bit more on Emily Drabinsky, Comrade Emily, the president of the American Library Association, a person who is 100% supported by your current school system, your public school system, the one that you're paying for. Because until they start condemning her, it means they're on board and they agree with her. So the public statements need to start today. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Emily Drabinsky, what we've learned about her, and uh, what else she wants to do with your public school system and your tax dollars in just a moment. But first, at 6.15, WMAL traffic. WMAL. Making sense of the news. Live. From the Home Paramount Pest Control Studios. Home Paramount, the leader in pest control since 1939. Miss anything? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Get today's breaking news on the Vince Colonnais Show weekdays, 3 to 6, right here on WMAL. Uh, but I think your point that public education needs to be a site of socialist organizing, I think libraries really do too. Your point that public education needs to be a place of socialist organizing, I think libraries need to, need to be too. That is 
Emily Drabinsky. Now, she's 48 years old. She was just elected president of the American Library Association in July, and she was celebrated as being a Marxist lesbian. Oh, yeah. She's very open about this. Oh, sure. We're not outing her or no, anything. No, no. We're uh-uh. just reminding everyone who she yeah. is. Marxist lesbian, president of the American Library Association, and she's not quiet at all about her politics. Um, now, she has deleted some of her tweets, but following her election, she posted, I cannot believe that a Marxist lesbian who believes that collective power is possible to build and can be wielded for a better world is the president-elect of the American Library Association. Why would she delete that? Mm. Why would she delete that? I don't know, Larry. Uh, this, this is what, and, and I just want to be clear here, because we live in a world where if, you know, non-entity David Duke yeah. decides to say, yeah, I think Trump would be a good president, then not only does Donald Trump have to answer for that of course. moron, but every single Republican candidate or Republican yeah. elected official must be asked by Jake Tapper or Chuck Todd for the first five minutes of an interview, do you condemn David Duke? Yeah. Do you with do you align yourself with him or do you condemn him? And that, that's the world we now live in. Yeah. That any single odious utterance that could be tangentially connected to the Republican Party, every single Republican elected official must condemn or support, right? And if you don't publicly vociferously condemn, then that's tantamount to being Hitler yeah. and you support them. So I need to know from every single public school superintendent in Northern Virginia and in Maryland, from every single school board member, every public school teacher, and every librarian, anyone who works in the educational system in this area uh, and who takes tax dollars in the schools, do you condemn or do you support Emily Drabinsky and her plan to make public school libraries breeding grounds for socialist organizing? It's that simple. Yeah. Do you condemn? Actually, not even do you support. Do you condemn? Do you condemn it, and will you now publicly condemn it? Because if you don't, that means you're on board. I've got a better idea, even better, is you don't have to be a member of the ALA, the American Library Association. I mean, it's a trade association. That's true. I wonder, and I don't know for sure, but I wonder, do li- our libraries require, they can't be required to be part of this. I mean, certainly- Well, do the libraries, See, that's is, it, what is I, it American Library or American Library, oh, it's a library, I guess. Library Association, and- these are these are public libraries, taxpayer mm-hmm. funded. You know, so I just that is something you're to right. Look. That's a great policy thing. And I think it can be done on a statewide basis yeah. because after Emily Drabinsky was elected, the state of Montana officially with, became with the Drew. first state to sever so, ties. I mean, I, with the I don't I don't think that we need people say, to condemn it. I think people need to walk away. I've said this about teachers. Oh. Oh, no, 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 no. If I may respectfully sure. disagree with you, you're right. Governor Yunkin should absolutely sever ties with yes. for every yes. single Virginia library yes. connected with the American Library Association. You don't Association. get the public fund. You don't get you're the absolutely funding. Right. But that isn't enough. No, no, no. Every single person must publicly condemn this person. And if they don't, then they are on board. No, no, that is how it works. I get it. It's not I, enough to just say, well, we're not affiliated. I don't care. I get do it. You, do you agree? Okay. I, do you agree that our libraries and our schools should be socialist organizing entities? I agree with you 100%, but I want to destroy the ALA. <laughs> I want the ALA to go away. Yeah. I don't want them to improve. This is unforgivable. The idea that, that you would... You would hire an avowed communist, a Marxist, someone who wants to harm children. Yeah. We're done. So this is why in conservative areas, look, you know, people are concerned. The country keeps, you know, fracturing this way. Well, you know, I'm done. Stop associating with these organizations that hate you. You know, it just this is I think you go to your library as citizens. We go to our library and then we appeal to our lawmakers yeah. and say the money has to be withdrawn to public libraries. Until they start, until they stop affiliating with this organization. Drabinsky has said that she wants to make sure that black people and members of the LGBTQ community see themselves reflected in the books on the local library shelves. Could That's I, the only of books left. That's the only thing reflected, for God's yes. sake. And, and I'm sorry, do, do we really believe that black Americans walk into a library and don't and fe- feel yeah. like there uh, are books? And, 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 and oh, by the way... <laughs> There's nothing wrong with a black American being enriched by know, reading Homer sorry, you know or, what, or, or reading Shakespeare. Hold on. You, you want to know what every author out there, every single author out there wants? They want to be on Oprah's book list. <laughs> Don't tell me 
that there's a problem with black people <laughs> in you. this country no. feeling disenfranchised. Emily Drabinsky, here she is. This is the president of the Library Association. So many of us find ourselves at the ends of our worlds. The consequences of decades of unchecked climate change, class war, white supremacy, and imperialism have led us here. If we want a world that includes public goods like the library, we must organize our collective power and wield it. Wow. It's 623. I'm John Matthews on News Talk 105.9 WMAL. Now on News Talk 105.9 WMAL. O'Connor and Company. It's 637 here on O'Connor and Company on a this is your typical Tuesday morning in the nation's <laughs> capital. Coming off a of Labor Day. Jill Biden has COVID. So she's gonna have to take she has a, break a cold from her hectic schedule. She's gonna go to the beach house yeah. again. Yeah. Joe Biden does not have COVID, but there's nothing wrong with the marriage. Everything's fine. How's it's Commander? A, sicker than a dog. <laughs> Coming up on this very program at 735, Steve Moore of Heritage about the economy. At uh, 805, we're going to speak with Story Zimmerman, who's running for Fairfax County School Board. And then at 835, Brent Bozell. I'm Larry O'Connor with Julie Gunlock. You know how D.C., you know, there's these um, agencies out there, magazines, websites, things like that, that rate the cities in America, yeah. right? This is like, like, for instance, we talked about how uh, Atlanta is the number one city for rats and yeah. pests, right? And we just DC this was number three. Talked I think. about how New Orleans, New Orleans, kind is of a dangerous city in in the top ten of world cities for the murder, murder per capita. Yeah, Ugh. the other nine cities are all in Mexico. Um, God. And and so we, they do this all the time. They rate them. and DC often finds itself rated amongst America's top cities for like health and fitness. If you notice, if you go around other cities. We do have an inordinate number of, of like bicyclists and runners and joggers and people out yeah. exercise. We're, we're generally a healthy fit town, mm-hmm. mostly because a lot of people out of town who have to work here and they got nothing. Yeah, well, we got a lot of alcohol to drink. That's that, <laughs> That's too. We often are rated gotta uh, work out. high in that region yeah. as well. All right. So here's the latest now. Congratulations, Washington, D.C. You did it. Well done. According to a recent survey, D.C. is now the least desirable city. In America to live, you it, know, Larry. We talk about this. I, you know, I come into the studio from Northern Virginia. I drive all the way up into DC and through DC, and sometimes I drive through Georgetown, and it is heartbreaking. The tent cities, the garbage. It is not pretty to look at, but that's all tied to crime. And you know, I I don't want to go anywhere near Union Station now. Yeah. We've talked about this on this show several times. It's a changed city. This is a survey of they break it down: um, rural Americans, suburban Americans, and urban Americans. You know, what yeah. city do you least want to live in? The rural Americans and suburban Americans all rate D.C. as number one in mm-hmm. the undesirable column. Yeah. For urban Americans, people who are currently living in big cities, they rank at number four. Mm-hmm. So if you're already dealing with the morass and lawlessness filth. and filth of a major American city, um, you, you, I guess there were three cities worse, probably the one you're in yeah, <laughs> and then two yeah. others uh, adjacently. But, uh, yeah, this is this is – this is why so many people have left D.C. Residents have left D.C. Yeah, in a and big I think way. I think also that sort of the natures the nature of the crimes, broad daylight, carjacking, carjackings yeah. in formerly safe areas. We've we've had a in Alexandria, Virginia, we've had shootings in the middle of day in Old Town, Alexandria, near very nice restaurants. We've had carjackings again, broad daylight, um, and and so the boldness of these crimes and a lot of it is because first of all the the morale is way down in these police at, you know in police stations there's not as they're recruiting like crazy but there just aren't enough cops to to do those sort of neighborhood beats and and you know this adds to the boldness of these criminals they used to say of new york city that it's a great place to visit but i wouldn't want to live there that yeah. was always sort of the the cliche and then there was a time in the 90s when they finally elected rudy giuliani as the mayor and yes. their, governor george pataki was a republican in yes. albany and it became actually a very desirable place yeah. to live the population exploded uh, a lot of wealth came into the city a lot of businesses moved into the city 
Um, and and now, of course, the pendulum has swung back the other way. D.C. is one of those places where people do like to visit here as well. They should. It's the federal capital, and it is that federal corridor is actually a pretty historic and great place to see during the day. But at nighttime, no one wants to go down there now because the Democrats have decided that police are an afterthought. Law and order is an afterthought. People don't need to be punished. I mean, unless they paraded in the Capitol for three hours when the police held the door open. You're absolutely Then you have to go to jail for 10 years. Yes, yes, 17 years. Uh, You know, there's another thing here. COVID had a, you know, a real impact on the city because it was shut down for so long because of Mayor... uh, Mayor Bowser, she did, would not allow the city to reopen. Then there were all these mandates, these vaccine mandates. It killed a lot of the small businesses. Plus, people just didn't come back to work. You know, we know that federal buildings are now closing. They're, you know, these real estate people are having to convert these business, uh, these business offices into apartments now. Um, so yeah, there's there's some real trouble in this city, and I don't know that we have the leadership to deal with it. No, not in any way whatsoever. And it's fine. when I moved here in 2012 uh, as a as a good conservative Republican from out there in the real America, I was so prepared to hate DC, you know, and and, and I loved it. I fell in love with Washington. Yeah, DC is so great. It was great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I used to people would ask me, you know, you know, uh, how are you like in DC? Um, people who don't live here. And I said, I, I'm ashamed to say, actually, it's a great town. I don't like the people who come here to work <laughs> in the capital. Even the, even, the politicians even, I don't like. Even some of those people are so idealistic when they get here. And it mm-hmm. just, you know, then you stick around as long as I have. And um, but, you know, D.C. is also a wonderful food city, you know, and because of this just incredible number of different immigrate uh, immigrants that we have in this city. We've got great Ethiopian food, great Korean food. You know, there's all these great things about the city and the different neighborhoods, but boy, it's become a dangerous city. Yeah. And, and again, some of the most iconic places like union station are just places you don't want to go anymore. They also ranked the most overrated and underrated cities and States. Uh, and also a recent survey of the friendliest cities in America. We're going to give you that mm. data in a moment because we don't want to just trash on DC We also want to talk up the places in this country that actually fared well. Uh, Some of the results might survive, might surprise you, and might survive you as well, (laughs) depending on, you know, whether you're starting. All right. So D.C. is now the least desirable city in America. Great job. By the way, remind me again, the politics, the party affiliation of those in charge of the city. It starts with a D. It starts with a D, I think. Mm. Dingbats. Yeah. um, The... (laughs) Elected officials in Washington, D.C. has turned a city, which, by the way, gets federal tax dollars subsidizing its operations, unlike any others. There is no reason. Yeah, and which, by the way, everyone's saying, like a lot of Democrats like to say, statehood, statehood now. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. The least desirable city in America should be its own state. This experiment has gone really well. Yeah. Once again, as I keep repeating, this whole home rule thing is a a failed experiment. It needs to be called back. Um, of course, the survey uh, rates these cities and people evaluate these cities based on low crime rate, affordable homes, and low cost of living. So, <laughs> boy, talk about wow. hitting for the cycle there, D.C. Strangely, the most desirable city in America is Seattle, Washington. What? I mean, of the big cities, I guess it's got the most going for it. I mean, it was Except Seattle. Antifa it was thing. Seattle or Detroit. Does anybody ask Andy No how well, he feels about that? I mean, I, I mean, name me a, a major city in America, like a large, populous city that you would prefer to live in. I guess maybe Dallas. I don't know Miami. I don't know. Eh, not really. Well, I Maine. Mean, anything in Maine? Portland, Maine. They're not big there cities. See, that's I know that's not big. My point. All yeah. right. Well. There you go. Seattle, Washington, top the list. Now, um, then they checked out the friendliest cities. All right. This okay. is a survey that specifically talks to um, the and this is based on um, on on how people friendly words that people use, actions hmm. that they use, and okay. and DC ranked twentieth, which isn't bad. Right. I think it's because there's so many people from other places that live here and work here for, for government. So they say nice things to you before they shoot you? Or well, no, steal no, no. your car? <laughs> no, it's the people who are who are from oh. like Nashville or from ah, you know rural it. Memphis who were here because they're working for their Congress. Got it, got and, it. And they brought a little more friendly with them. Yeah. But you could be right about that. <laughs> uh, but I want Can you I to please have your car? Go look ahead. at this trend now for the friendliest cities in America and tell me what you think they have in common. Austin, Texas. Mm. Charlotte, North Carolina. Columbus, Ohio. San Antonio, Texas. El Paso, Texas. Those are the friendliest cities in America. Those states, what? Oh, Starts God. with an R. Starts I with an R. I can't mm. quite put my finger on it, but those states all seem to be in certain. Oh, red, red, red yeah, comes to mind. I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. But I don't know why. Because we're nicer. I don't know why DC is seen as undesirable. It's it's escaping me. Muriel Bowser can't quite figure it out. Phil Mendelson, the chairman of the district council, he can't There's quite no crime figure here. it out. No, not at all. I mean, I, you know what? It's a good <laughs> DC is America's best kept secret. <laughs> this is great. Let people think that it's not a great place to live. In other news, a fender bender in southeast DC turned into a carjacking. Police say the driver was assaulted when her car and her car was stolen after she was hit by another car in a Capitol Hill neighborhood. Uh, she driving Capitol along, minding Hill. her own business in southeast D.C., just southeast of the Capitol. She wow. gets hit in the fender bender, and she gets out, starts to look at the damage. Guy jumps in, steals the car. She's lucky to be alive. True that. Um, seven carjackings in D.C. over this past weekend, by the Jeez. way, in other news. By the way, which, of course, is not at all connected to D.C. being the least desirable place to live right. in America. Right, right. Giant stores have, not, in completely unrelated news, giant stores have now announced that they're not stocking certain items because of widespread theft. They're yeah, not going to be... Just, just brace for Michelle Obama to come in and blame giant for creating right. a food desert or they're, a medical de- desert. Well, and, and even worse, just personal health care items. Yeah. Because that stuff is Toothpaste. especially brand names. So brand name health and beauty items like Colgate, Tide, Advil, no longer available in seven different, gi- or excuse me, uh, all giant grocery stores in Southeast D.C. Okay, so for those that are listening that aren't familiar, that is a, a very poor area of the city, okay? And so you think about... So the the crime is actually in hurting the most vulnerable. You think yep. of the these older elderly people on fixed incomes, yep. you think of people with, you know, multiple kids needing to go to the grocery store to get, you know, toothpaste and now they have to get on a bus and they have to go halfway across town well the good news is they can skip the the fair on metro and just hop over the turnstile yeah there you go because it was racist to give people that's right that's right fairs are racist right i forgot Um, because these are the policies that have made dc the least desirable city to live in america Mm. also in completely unrelated news a woman was stabbed on the metro this sunday at the Navy Yard Station, which is right near the baseball stadium, of course, it was before 6 p.m. on Sunday. It wasn't even in the middle of the night. She was taken to the hospital and is in critical condition. Ugh. This was on board the Green Line at the Navy Yard Navy Station. Navy Yard Station. Mm-hmm. Now, Navy Yard also is one of those areas that's really tr- been transformed. It used to be kind of a rough area and is now very nice, very gentrified. You right. know, got all sorts of like Tony restaurants and, you know, stores. And well, here and you go. And now they have carjackings and stabbings yes. on the wow. Metro. But, uh, but but the DC Council's still on vacation. They're doing a great job. Yeah, they really are. It's you know the problem. You're right. The thing that will solve all of this is statehood. That's right. That's right. It's six fifty two.